Hello and welcome to SolidWorks CAM Standard 2018 Demo. Today we're going to have a look at uh, how to um, use SolidWorks CAM in the uh, or CAM Standard in the uh, SolidWorks 2018 environment. SolidWorks CAM basically gives us CNC programming inside of SolidWorks. It's fully integrated and there are a number of steps that we need to follow in order to be successful in generating the end result which is the g-code going out to the machine. The first of those is to actually have a uh, part model whether you create that uh, from scratch or whether you open an existing part file from SolidWorks. That's what we need to do in the first instance. And then uh, once we've got that uh, completed, then we click on the SolidWorks CAM feature tree. We define a number of things. First of all, we define the machine. Uh, so that's a little bit of information about the machine um, and uh, whether it's metric or imperial, etc. And then we uh, have the option to modify some of the controller parameters. The next stage is to define the stock, so the size of the, and nature of the material that we're um, going to be machining into. The next step is to define the machinable features, so SolidWorks extracts uh, features. Uh, if you're familiar with FeatureWorks, it uses a similar process, but it's slightly more powerful, and uh, it tells us what can actually be machined. It then uh, gives us the uh, ability to create an operation plan and to adjust some parameters. And what that operation plan basically does is it describes how the material is going to be cut away uh, for that particular feature. From that, we go and generate tool paths. And then we simulate the material removal. The final step is to post process the tool paths, and this is where we export the G code out ready for machining. In terms of a flowchart, uh, this is uh, what uh, SolidWorks CAM uh, standard looks like. So, again, we uh, model the part in SolidWorks, uh, import the part, or then we change to SolidWorks CAM feature tree. We define our machine, change the controller parameters, we define our stock, and then define the machine of all features. Um, that can be done with automatic feature recognition or interactive feature recognition. Um, from there we generate our operation plan, and then we adjust the parameters as needed, and then generate our tool paths. We then simulate those tool paths and determine whether they're correct or not. If they're not, we can go back through this loop here. But if they are, then we can proceed to the post-processing and then finally transmit our files out to the CNC to do the machining as required. So looking at SolidWorks, I'm just going to open up an existing file. Okay, so normal SolidWorks file here with the usual features. Some of those have been named just to make it a little bit easier to see where we're going with that. If we expand the Feature Manager design tree we'll see that there are three new tabs here. SolidWorks CAM Feature Tree where we see a number of uh, features. Uh, the machine uh, specification, this is where we can define our machine. The stock manager, which defines the stock from which we're going to cut our particular part, and uh, also the recycle bin. Um, coordinate systems um, can be defined if required. The SolidWorks CAM operation tree will become populated once we get to the generate operation plan. You'll see that shortly. And then the third tab is the uh, the tool crib. Uh, manager where we can see all of the tools defined under this specific tool crib. Just going to switch back to the uh, the cam uh, tree there and we'll have a look at defining the machine. So the other thing we'll note here is that I've got a full toolbar with the, uh, the SolidWorks cam um, tools on there. Um, this is a tab that snaps into the command manager. Uh, if you don't see that, then it's most likely that you need to turn on SolidWorks CAM in your add-ins. 
Okay, so it should be activated here in uh, both checkboxes there. To start looking at a particular component, I'm just going to click on Define Machine, which will open up the Machine dialog. I can specify a machine here, and I've selected the mill metric. The metric specification comes from the SOLIDWORKS units. This is currently set to metric. If I change that to inch pound seconds, it would come up with mill inch. So uh, in order to select that, I just need to pick that and click select, and it will propagate that into the definition there. We can set up tool cribs with various different types of tools. We have post processor options here. I've selected the M3 Axis Tutorial. When you pick it from this, you actually need to click on Select uh, to make it the active one. If you simply select it in that box, uh, that won't be enough. It'll maintain whatever it's got as the active post processor until you select the Select option there. There are some other options in here. Uh, I won't go into those. Obviously, the rotary and tilt axis are for CAM Professional, which is currently not available in our region. I'm just going to click OK to uh, complete that. The Stock Manager, if I edit the definition for that, I can do that from a right click here or I can click on the Stock Manager button in the Command Manager there. It allows us to specify how we uh, set up our stock. Uh, we can pick a material for it from the material drop down there. And uh, in this particular example, I've got this set to bounding box currently. You can also specify an extruded sketch to define that shape. Additionally, you can also import an STL file or a part file, which may be a predetermined shape for the particular stock. You can also set up some coordinate systems. Uh, probably the other most useful thing here is offsetting the bounding box. So simply by clicking on the spin boxes here, I can add material uh, in all uh, three axes. Um, to that bounding box there. Just leave that one as it is and once we've got that defined we can click on the extract ma machinable features. You'll see the SolWorks CAM message window open up as it's processing and you can see that it's determined a number of different features here. So we've got a face cleanup feature, there's a perimeter which it might want to clean up and there's some irregular pockets and a rectangular pocket around the inside with some islands defined and then there's another uh, couple of irregular pockets and there's some hole groupings there with a number of hole drilling operations pre-specified. Once we uh, have those uh, features extracted then what we would need to do is progress to generate the operation plan. So I'm just going to click on that button Again, the CAM message window pops up to tell us it's doing that. And once that's completed, it'll switch us to the SOLIDWORKS CAM operation tree. And here you'll note that there are a number of operations for roughing and contouring, and also centre drilling, uh, etc. You'll note that if they're displayed in blue, that that means that they have had operation plan generated. Uh, but what is required is to generate the toolpath for those. I can click on, click on the Generate Toolpath button to process that list and generate toolpaths for each of them. And if I have a look in the tree there, you can see that there's a, a toolpath shown. You can see it on the screen as well. The one that's left in blue is usually either a redundant uh, process or the tool is too big to actually engage in creating that toolpath in that region. Um, you could change the tool part, change the tool, or you could um, just delete that out. For, the, for this particular example I'm going to uh, leave that as it is. And we're going to skip to the next step which is simulating the tool path. So I'm just going to click on that button there. And I can click on run and it will run through and uh, cut away the material um, as defined by the tool paths. And you can see it changing tools. I've got it set quite rapid, um, otherwise this can take a while.
There are a number of options in the toolpath simulation that uh, can allow you different ways of visualising how this is actually being uh, processed. Um, you can change the way that the stock looks, etc. You can also step it through single step. Uh, for a toolpath this size, um, it probably takes some time, but you can actually split it up into uh, smaller toolpaths as well <coughs> for visualisation purposes. Once we've got that uh, toolpath all sorted out there, then the the final step is to go to the post processor. So I'm just going to click on the button there from the command manager. It wants us to save the post output file. I'm just going to save that onto the desktop for this example. It goes out as a text file. And then I'm going to click on the play button in the post process dialog. From the options, I'm just going to select the option to open the G-code file in the SolidWorks CAM NC editor. That'll let us see the NC code there. If I click on the backplot window, I can actually see the toolpaths alongside the G-code. And if I click the play button here, you can actually see it scroll through the G-code whilst it's generating the toolpath. Obviously that was fairly quick, you can slow that down. Uh, if I just drag that back here, you can see that it uh, will show that uh, much more slowly. So um, this can actually be a great tool for troubleshooting any uh, little hiccups in, uh, in a tool path. Okay, so that's SolidWorks CAM standard in a nutshell. And uh, I'd just like to thank you for listening.